Hey guys, Kevin Magic back again, and had some requests to do some uh, gameplay videos on the channels. It's one thing I really don't do a whole lot is show some of my ranked battles. Uh, end of season just completed a few hours ago. We're starting a new season. Um, if you guys uh, saw the video that I uploaded earlier today, uh, you'll see like on my third account, I actually bought an epic card, so I'm anxious to try that out. Um, our guild brawls also ended as well, so I was able to get a Gladius case. So let's start by opening the Gladius case, see what we get. Because in ranked battles, um, in certain rule sets, or if you have the summoner, you can use gladiator cards. So let's go ahead and open this case. So this account, basically, I'm shooting for making it max bronze. And one card that I did purchase earlier today with Jovac, <clears throat> my main account, and sent it over here, was a uh, dual summoner uh, from Rebellion. I believe it was the one for Life and Earth. So I am, oh wow, so this is a good pack, so we got three rares. But yeah, I'm curious to see in Bronze, I don't see a whole lot of people playing uh, the common summoners. So I want to give that a try and see how that works out just to try to test out a few different teams. Okay, so let's start with the commons. So we got Crash, Isgald. I really like this card, I use it a lot. This card I never use for death. Ajax Lightfoot, I don't play life a whole lot, so I rarely use that card. Same thing with Sarius uh, for fire, don't use that card a lot. So the big hit for me in this pack is the common, Isgald. Actually, before we start battling, let me take a look at my cards. So I can kind of show you guys um, where this account is at. So these are our my gold cards that I have on this account. Let's look at the gladiator cards. So like I said, so I'm shooting for uh, max bronze. So all I need are level three commons and I'll be set. So actually for Isgald, I do have a level three gold. So I guess if I wanted to, I could actually burn uh, these and just, you know, stick with the gold card. Same thing with Kretrelba. You know, I do have a gold foil, so I don't really need those. So at some point I may burn, um, if I can get like one of each uh, common gold, that's all I need. And then I might just burn the other ones. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything I can bind here. Uh, for the rares, of course, everyone knows Captain Katie is awesome. Just need one more Captain Katie. I can get her to level two. Um, Relinor Cleaver. I use this one a lot. I really like that one for water. Uh, those are probably the two I use the most. I use Aurelia too occasionally from time to time. One thing I've noticed, especially in the lower levels for me, I'm really missing a lot of two mana cost cards that I think are useful. So that's one thing I might um, check out in Rebellion as I know there are a lot of uh, two cost cards um, that I think will help fill out the deck. But this is it for my um, Gladiator cards. Uh, for the Epics, um, I actually do have a couple copies of Korra, but still at level one. Marisol I really like as well. And Legendaries, um, I think in one of the last videos that I showed uh, with this account, I actually pulled a Legendary. So that is my only Gladius Legendary card on this account. Okay, so that's for the Gladiator cards. So now for Rebellion, for the reward cards. Does this show everything? So I did get um, the first Epic. I got Arcane Weaver earlier today, so I'm anxious to try that one out. And like I just said, for the Commons, I'm really only shooting for level 3. So once I can get level 3 Commons, I'm pretty much done there. And then if I can get my Rares, you know, I need to get a single copy of each of them at least. But the goal is to get them to level 2. And then I'll be done. All right, so let's do some battles. So you can see I've got full energy on this account. <clears throat> For me, beginning of the season is usually really, really tough. You know, everyone gets reset lower. They're battling their way back to the leagues they were at previously. So um, I did play a few battles earlier today on my main account, and I think I actually won my first six or seven battles. And I'm like, okay, that's good. I think I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Okay, so we've got 23 mana, we've got Reach. Normally, on my main account, I would play uh, Pasibilis. I don't have Pasibilis on this account. Or with Reach, I would play Water. Well, let's try Water. 
and let's go. Since it's low mana, I want you in the second position. I'll put you in the first position. Uh, Uraeus and like I said, for two cost, I don't have a whole lot of options. So I can either go with the Archer, Chaos Agent, I'm going to throw in simply because if someone attacks the back line, this will give Uraeus a little bit of defense, plus it's an extra 10% glint if I win. Yeah, let's go with the Archer. See how we do. I don't think I have any zero cost. Nope. So one of the things with this account, um, I think like most accounts that play in low uh, modern in bronze, you know, we've got a lot of the Chaos Legion cards and then maybe a sprinkling of Rebellion. <clears throat> the one cards I really don't see a whole lot of are uh, Rift Watchers. Even the commons, I don't see a whole lot of Rift Watcher cards being played uh, in bronze. So the next rule set, if we can get somewhere in the mid to upper 20s, uh, maybe I'll try Death and try that new Arcane Healer. But yeah, anytime I see the Reach rule set, I automatically think of the Coastal Sentry. This is another card too. A lot of the reward cards that are just um, that are um, un able to be unlocked now, I'd like to get um, gold foils. You know, I only need one copy of the commons, and I don't think they're too pricey. And the gold foil value really adds up to your glint. Um, I had a battle I played yesterday where I actually managed to have all gold cards, including my summoner. And uh, instead of getting around 200 glint that I was getting, I ended up getting like 330. So it does make a big difference. Okay, so hopefully this dodge will come into play a little bit because um, they're probably going to go after him. So hopefully I can tie them up for a couple of rounds. Um, he's going to be a pain in the neck. Trap fell away. If he gets a kill, he's going to get real big real quick. So that's a good play on his part. So let's see how this goes. The only thing I don't like is five speed and flying. This thing's going to be hard to hit. So you can see that one's dead right away. Yep, there's one miss. So I need the archer to hit to take care of trap. Okay, and I think we're good. All right, so there's the first win. So that's one for magic. So we got 53 glint. So um, on this account, I think towards the end of the season, as I got a little bit higher in bronze, by the end of the season, I was getting maybe 75 to 90 glint per win. But like you saw in this battle, I only had one gold card, so it's only an extra 10%. But that little bit does add up. And, you know, especially in the lower accounts where you're not getting tons and tons of glint, you want to try to squeeze in as many gold cards as you can. Okay, so let's try another battle. <clears throat> yeah, I'm only at 520 now, so it's going to be a long road to get to 700, to get to bronze one. So that's kind of where I want to be with this account. If I can get above... 7 800 rating, you know, so between 800 and 1,000, that's probably where this deck is going to do the best. I'm not going to get above uh, 900 or 1,000 with the cards I have on this account, but we'll just do the best we can. And like I said, I'm going to try to slowly funnel uh, some funds for my main account here to, to build up the deck. Okay, so he plays Water and Death, which are not available. Uh, Lost Legendaries, which is fine. I don't have a lot of Legendary cards. 24 mana. So my thinking is um, dragon is out just because of the mana. Do I want to go green and go uh, magic damage or do I want to go red and go sneak? Or another option also since it's fairly low is throwing Catralba. So that leaves me 12 mana. Uh, let's see. throw in the hill giant in the front just for a little bit of defense now the one thing i'm worried about and i've come up against this uh, from time to time is people that kind of know you're going to play katrella will sometimes play a thorns in the back so they'll put the knifer in the back which is actually a good strategy because if katrella hits him twice uh, it's going to kill itself 
So the thing is, is he going to play Cottrell? But I'm going to put the Knifer in the back anyway, because with red and green being available, yeah, he might go um, magic. But then again, with red, he might be trying to do a lot of sneak, and that's going to run into the Knifer. So then let's just put in some cheap things. Let's put in Chaos Agent, maybe put him in the front. See, I don't have the dodge because now he's only level one. And for two mana, yeah, let's put in the puffer. So this whole team is just going to depend on hopefully uh, Katroba killing whatever's in the back and then just going crazy. If he goes heavy magic, it's not going to look good. He's just going to wipe me out. Okay, so he did go red. He didn't go super heavy in the sneak, but yeah, this guy's in for a rude awakening. Yep, he's going to ambush and run right into that. And then when the match starts, and he attacks again, that's it for him. Okay, so he did his job. The bad thing is going to be this with the blast. Because I'm wasting a hit on the shield, and now next turn, Katrubo's in the front, which is not where I want her to be. So, yep, it's not looking good. Yep. So, had a good strategy with Katrubo, but he was just doing too much damage, and I didn't have enough hit points in the front. So, that one was definitely tragic. So, we got one for magic, one for tragic. Yeah, so much of this game is a guessing game on what the opponent's going to play. My thought is, if they can go magic, they usually will. So that's why I like playing the Death Splinter a lot with Thaddeus Brood with a negative one magic. There's been so many games I've won because I'll choose that summoner. He'll choose magic. Um, he'll get debuffed. A lot of times I see Moxie and Rebel on the other side with Obsidian. So he thinks he's going to get all these with two magic damage, and now they're only one. And just that simple choice has won me a lot of games. Okay, so we've got death and 28 magic available. So I'm definitely going death with this because I want to try that healer. So my standard team is usually Cursed Windico. Um, I'll usually go with the Warden just to get some armor. Uh, corrosive fog. So why am I not seeing? How much does he cost? I thought he cost seven. Huh? Why am I not seeing the corrupted healer? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's only five. I thought he was a lot more expensive than that. I thought he was like seven. Okay, even better. So he's only five. So he gives two magic damage. And the Corrupted Healing. So that leaves me 9 mana, which is perfect. Because I love a lot of the 3-cost cards for death. So we're definitely throwing in the 2 Sneak. Now I can either go with the Hireling to repair the armor. Or, yeah, let's do that. Let's put the Hireling there. Yeah, let's see how it goes. The key would be with, uh, I think, that with this Corrupted Healing, if I was able to play and owned a lot of the death cards that have Scavenge. You know, because that's kind of kind of offset. And, yep, so he's got a double Martyr going for Korra. So this probably will not be pretty. I think I'll be able to take out his healer, but Korra is going to be the issue. But then again, I might be able to heal up a little bit. Okay, so she gets a buff. Okay, so he's got Affliction, so that means Corrupted Healing won't work. No one else has taken damage yet. Okay, so he got a heal. But now, unfortunately, she's going to get buffed again. Yeah, 
and again. So this is where Korra wins the game because I'm not going to be able to hit it. So we're just going to go ahead and skip this. We all know how that's going to end. So that didn't turn out well. Sometimes the simplest strategies are the best. If you can play Korra, play Korra. But yeah, I definitely want to see how Corrupted Healing works where, you know, especially the tank or whoever gets blast damage and see how much they actually heal for. It says 70%, but is that 70% of their max health or 70% of the damage they've taken? But yeah, let me let me know, you guys. Do you know um, how the corrupted healing is supposed to work? Have you used any of the new um, epics in ranked play? Okay, so we got 28 mana again. Let's see which elements are available. So this one is thorns. So let's go ahead and try death again. That is brood. Okay, so I do have scavenge with rift wing. So that would offset some of the damage it would take. I like Silent Chevy. So everybody gets thorns though, so I don't want to do a whole lot of melee damage. So I probably should go more magic. Definitely want to have armor. Yep, we want to see how you work. Um, who else? Well, let's take out Silent Chevy. Let's put in Hardclaw. I could go armor repair for three. Let's put in a shatter and cast agent. <clears throat> oh, so the only thing I'm not happy with. No, let's not do rift wing. Let's go for. I like Dark Arborist. I don't know if he's going to do a whole lot of melee. Or do I want to stun? Let's go for a stun. Okay, see how that works. So what I'm going to do with the glint that I have right now is save it up until I can get enough for a second epic. Okay, so this is the play that I see a lot. I see Moxian Rebel, and then I see a couple of, you know, non-attack cards on either side, so he'll get the magic damage. So he's going to be doing a lot of magic damage to Hardclaw. So we'll see how much Hardclaw actually heals for and how this works out. So we're going to get pinged for one damage a lot. I miss. Didn't. There we go. So he got healed for four. And his max health went down. Missed again. So far, the healing is helping keep him alive. Unfortunately, three misses in a row, really. Well, so far, I really like the healing because he should have been dead a long time ago. Yeah, he survived a lot longer than I thought he would. And I think he survived long enough to give us the win. Because as you can see now, it's going to be pretty easy. So definitely the champion of this match was the Weaver. So just in that battle alone, I can see the power of that card. So I'm really anxious to play that card uh, with Jovac with my main account, where I have a lot higher level cards and a lot better cards. Um, especially I have like a Curse Windigo with healing. So if it can heal itself, and then if it's still not at full strength, you know the Arcane Weaver will top it off. That that will be huge. Even if its max health goes from 11 to 10, you can see the power of of that card already. 
And another key is going to be too, if I get into some sort of a blast rule set where I have multiple monsters uh, taking damage, you know, it's going to heal all of them. So that's that corrupted healing is almost kind of the counter to uh, blast battles. Okay, so we've got the poison rule set, 43 mana. So with 43, I like going uh, dragon. Unfortunately, the only dragon summoner I have is only level 1. But we can try it. And let's go death so I can throw in the healer again. Okay, so what do we have for large amounts of health? I like Queen of Crows just for all the health. Jinchuala, you can be in the front. Unfortunately, my hard call is not high enough to have immunity. I don't think I have anything with immunity on this level. Unless I have that new... Okay, you've got immunity. So let's put you in just to see if you can stay alive. Let's take out Archimus the bear. Uh, definitely want to put in the healer. And then what else has a lot of hit points? You have eight hit points. That leaves four. Um, this account does not have um, the three cost martyr. Otherwise, I would put in the martyr card. So I need to get uh, martyr on this account. Um, Riftwing does have scavenge. So I could do that. Let's go Dark Arborist, though, for the negative melee. I like that card a lot. So, let's see. Who do we want where? Let's put Queen of Crows in the back. Yep, let's just see what happens. A lot of times in the poison rule set, it's like, I just want to try to outli outlive the poison and let him die. Because you can see a lot of his are low level. You know, four and five... Um, health. He does have a couple melee, so the Dark Arborist will help slightly. And another thing, too, with the Poison Roll set, I just thought about this. As long as they don't die, oh shoot, he's going to die. I was going to say, as long as they don't die, he's going to heal everyone that was poisoned. But unfortunately, I came up against Thaddeus Brood, who knocked his health from 3 to 2, and that was key, because now my uh, my healer died right away. So if I could have got a plus 1 health, that would have really helped. Okay, so now I'm going to lose a couple more. He's going to lose him. But unfortunately, he's got a lot of guys that are just hanging in there. So now I wanted to have, I should have put him in the very back. Because he's not going to take poison damage. And I don't really want him to take any damage. Because now he's going to hit him for three. But, look at this, guys. Here's the power of immunity. You're poisoned, I'm not. So, one of the new uh, Soulbound Reward cards came through. So, it wasn't the healer that time. And this is a card, I don't know if I would ever play it other than in a Poison Rule set, but you can see it came in, in uh, pretty clutch right there. Okay, guys, there you have it. I'll wrap up the video. We've been over uh, 20 minutes. Um, hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you learned a little bit about maybe some of the new reward cards. I don't know if you've had a chance to play them all or not. Uh, first impressions are I'm really impressed with the healer. Um, I really uh, had hoped that he would have survived that one more turn so we could have seen him um, heal the entire team. So I think he's really going to be clutch in those poison rule sets if you can give him enough health. Um, and then also another card that maybe you haven't thought about playing a whole lot, the Brave. Um, he's another one that looks like he's great in that poison rule set. So... Let me know in the comments um, if you guys tested out any of the new reward cards, which ones are your favorites, which ones you think are kind of sleepers that people think are kind of meh but are actually pretty powerful. i uh, love to read your guys' comments. And until next time, stay the course, keep on forging, have fun, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.